Initially announced back in 2020, Back for Blood seemed like a promising game. Developed by Total Rock Studios, the same developers who worked on the original Left 4 Dead, it seemed like we would finally have a modern take on the Left 4 Dead formula. Left 4 Dead 2 released back in 2009, and while it still has a large community and modding scene, there hasn't been much in terms of official content for the game. But that's to be expected from Valve. They seem to be allergic to making games with the number 3 in them. Regardless, Back for Blood seemed like everything we wanted in the trailers. Another zombie survival game where you're tasked with surviving large hordes of the undead on your way to the end of a level, all while surviving unique events and special infected that are trying to impede your progress. It all looked really good on paper, and I was honestly extremely excited for it. It seemed like a return to form. Gaming has evolved a lot since the original Left 4 Dead and Left 4 Dead 2, so it would be nice to see how the gameplay would be modernized and how many improvements they could have. And then the game dropped on October 12th, 2021. It seemed to be hit with pretty mixed reviews. Some people loving the game and others having major technical issues with it. I honestly don't recall seeing too many glowing reviews for the game, but I also don't remember people saying it was the worst thing in the world. It seemed like it would be a pretty meh game by all accounts. Not offensive, but nothing that seemed like it would stick around for a long time. I myself remember playing it on launch with some friends, and while I had a good time, I didn't find myself really remembering too much about it. All my friends never played again after that day, so I was left alone, where I would then slowly but surely lose all motivation to play. All of this brings me to now, where I decided to see if the game has progressed in a better direction, and if it was more fun now than at launch. Which is why I played Back for Blood in 2024, so you don't have to. So Back for Blood functions very differently when you compare it to Left 4 Dead. Of course it does, there's plenty of gameplay innovations since 2009 that have happened, and there's going to be a lot of things that are different. So if you come into this game expecting a Left 4 Dead clone, you're going to get some aspects of the game in which you're going to be very familiar with, but there's also going to be some things that you're unfamiliar with in terms of the specific aspects if you're comparing it to Left 4 Dead. There's nothing super outlandish here, but if you're coming into Back for Blood thinking you're getting left for dead 3 you're not really getting that you're getting something mechanically similar and stylistically similar but it's not an exact one-to-one -one. because while it's made by the same people it's obviously not the exact same ip but similar premises so there's this main little hub area in which you can utilize different weapons attachments you know see how each weapon functions you can select what missions you want to do and you can also go to like the supply depot you get little credits that you can use to unlock different things throughout the campaign I believe it's really just by progressing through the game and leveling up that you get these credits. Maybe there's some challenges involved. I honestly don't remember all that much, to be honest with you. I didn't make a note on that when I was playing. But you get these little credits and you're able to use them to kind of progress essentially mini battle passes. These net you different rewards, whether that be uh, different cards that you can use, we'll get into that in a second, or different little like emblems or calling cards, things of that nature. There's also like weapon camos and character skins, things of that nature. Some of these things can be purchased with real world money, some of them are not. So again, modern gaming mechanics, but nothing super awful uh, as far as i could tell like i said nothing was pay to win uh but in a game like this where if you're playing it as a story driven game or a single player type game uh, something you're not doing pvp it really wouldn't matter too much if it was pay to win anyways but there were some modern gaming mechanics like i said i didn't find it to be that awful so this main little hub area was fine. You had your different options of things to go through. I, I found myself just kind of running around, taking in the atmosphere and everything. The game does look very good. Graphically speaking, it looked great, and I didn't really have any issues with that. There wasn't anything that I was like, oh my god, this thing looks awful, or I didn't like the style or design of this. Of course, it's a relatively dark game. It's taking place in a post-apocalyptic world with zombies. They're actually called Ridden in this, but... For the sake of clarity and convenience, they're zombies. They're just not called that in lore. 
So the game does look good. I like the way that everything looks. I don't have any issues with that. The game ran well. From what I was reading about the game, it had performance issues on launch, at least on the Xbox versions. Uh, but playing on an Xbox Series X right now, I was having no issues with performance of this game. So that was all positive. I wasn't having a bad experience just being in the menus of the game. Uh, that's going to change a little bit. So we're going to hop into that right now. So in this section of the video, I'm going to be breaking down the good and the bad of Black for Blood in my experience of playing. Going to be going through the things that I really enjoyed about the game as well as things I didn't like. So let's jump into it with something that was pretty noticeable as soon as I started to try to play the game. And that is that this is a mainly cooperative game. A game that works best if you're playing with other people. Since I didn't have any friends online that I could play with, I decided I would try my luck at trying to find a match-made game of Back from Blood. The game has been out for a little bit now, the community has kind of died off in a way, there's not as many people playing it, so being able to actually find a group just randomly searching in public lobbies is going to be a little bit difficult, at least it was for me. I literally sat on this screen trying to find a game for like 10 minutes, realized it wasn't going to work, so then I just gave up, played offline, and played a solo match. But I think if you're looking at a LFG type post thing, you're not going to have an issue finding people. There's always going to be people most likely willing to play the game. But just going, searching for a public game, you might have a little bit of trouble trying to do that in this game. So that was the first thing I noticed, and that really uh, turned me off because as I was getting ready and a little bit excited to play the game, I was like, ah, oh, Nobody plays this anymore. But once you're all set up in your lobby and back for blood, the next thing you have to do is choose your cards and your character. I briefly touched on cards earlier as they are available in Supply Depot, but let me give you a breakdown on what these are. The card system in Back for Blood is just different modifiers that you can have throughout your game. Some of these things will give you less stamina used when you use a melee weapon, or you have larger magazines, maybe healing a teammate heals you a little bit. Little perks and buffs that are beneficial to you throughout your game. And playing this again in 2024 brought me my first major difference between now and when the game launched. You see, initially, when the game launched, you made your deck of cards, and you would choose a select number of those cards at the start of each chapter. And eventually, by the end of the campaign, most of your deck would be usable and active in-game. Playing it now, in 2024, all of your cards in your deck are active from the get-go. And that's an extremely positive change from when I played at launch. Because at launch, I was like, okay, cool, I have... 20 cards I'm allowed to have in my deck here, and yet you wouldn't even be able to use all of them right at the start. I do enjoy this change. That is a huge plus from launch to now. I don't know exactly when that change occurred, but it's definitely a positive if you go back and play the game now that the card system has been revamped. The cards are still there, but they're active right from the start of the game, not pick and choose ones here and there. And once you pick your cards, you're able to pick your character. And that's another positive I like about this game is the characters are really well made. They look really good. That also helps that the graphics in Back for Blood are also very good. Things look pretty high quality, high fidelity. It's a good looking game through and through. And the characters are no exception there. They're designed very well. Some of them look a little bit more prepared for a zombie apocalypse than others. And it gives a nice variety. They all have their own personality, their own distinct look. And it's basically the same way it was in Left 4 Dead. All the characters look unique, but they all look good. Nobody looks extremely out of place. They kind of look like they were thrown into a zombie apocalypse, but some people were a little bit more prepared than others. Each of your characters also have special perks that come with them, so special abilities. Uh, very similar to cards, but the medic in the group might heal people a little bit faster or somebody gets less recoil on their guns things of that nature so picking your character isn't just based on who you like aesthetically there is also an active choice in how you want to play the game when choosing your characters now that you have your characters and cards selected you can load into the game and no matter where you start off you're gonna start off in a safe room of sorts in this safe room you're gonna see a lot of things that you would in left for dead i hate to keep drawing comparisons to this game but it's the perfect thing to compare it to 
you spawn in in a safe room and there are some weapons around you. You're going to see a little bit of a difference here between this and Left 4 Dead, which is that you can actually purchase attachments and whatnot for your weapons. You'll gain these points as you traverse through the levels and you can adjust your weapons to your liking, buy new ones, buy upgrades, buy equipment. You have a lot of different options here. So whether you want a med kit or you want a tool kit to get you into some more exclusive areas, you have different options as to what you can spend your in-game currency on. In-game meaning earned in-game, nothing that you have to purchase with real world money so you have a few options in the spawn room here once you're all settled you just go on through the map like you would in any other left for dead like game you're going to spend your time traversing through these relatively linear levels and having random crescendo events throughout your playtime. crescendo events being Oh, you have to lower this bridge? Well, doing this action is going to alert the horde. That is a crescendo event. There's going to be plenty of those throughout your time playing Back for Blood. So, some of these crescendo events are very boring. Like I just said, lowering a bridge just raises an alarm. Or some of these are very entertaining or just have a little bit more thought put into them. Like at the end of one of the chapters, you have to plant a bomb on a bridge and get out of there. Which you actually have to think a little bit about what you do. It's not as simple as there is just a horde, you gotta survive. There is no, and another objective that you have to do while surviving the horde. So, normal things you would expect out of a game that lends itself to basically be a left for dead clone it's exactly what you would expect the gameplay feels obviously a lot more modern you can aim down the sights with any of your weapons you have your different attachments things of that nature the game runs well i didn't run into any issues while playing the game and the gunplay felt pretty good there were some instances in which i felt it to be more advantageous to actually just hip fire my weapons uh, but aiming down the sights wasn't options but uh, the bigger the hordes, honestly, hip firing is going to be really serviceable for you anyways. So actual gameplay wise, the game isn't that bad at all. And it throws a variety of different enemies at you throughout your playtime. Enemies that function very similarly to what you would expect out of things from Left 4 Dead. But there's also some new additions here. There's one enemy that's basically caked onto a wall. And if you don't shoot it before you pass it as soon as you pass it it's gonna pin you to the ground and someone's got to help you back up so there are some variations in these enemies in terms of different ones that are boss like or mini bosses and they function similarly to left 4 dead but there is also some unique ones here as well so overall, it seems like the game has moved in a pretty positive direction post-launch. They've made some really positive changes that definitely bode well for the actual health of the game, but what has been keeping it from actually being a really well-received game, or something that has a lot of people still playing it? I think that really comes down to one of the main things that made Left 4 Dead such an incredible experience, and that is the level design in the replayability or memorability of these characters and the maps themselves. What do I mean by that? When I think of Left 4 Dead, I am thinking of Dead Carnival or Dead Air. I am thinking of these massive set pieces that I can basically draw from memory that ingrained themselves into me. I think of Left 4 Dead and I think of these massive set pieces. When you play Back for Blood, I didn't really get the feeling of these massive set pieces. I felt like I was realistically playing through the same few areas, you know, some industrial areas, city-like areas. Nothing felt all grandiose in the sense of this is a super memorable set piece that really sets it apart from other pieces in the game. There are some moments like that, but I feel like what Left 4 Dead did really well is almost every single part of the experience of playing Left 4 Dead, and maybe this is partially nostalgia speed, Speaking, but every single part of Left 4 Dead felt memorable in some capacity, and I cannot say the same for Back 4 Blood. Now, of course, there are some instances in Back 4 Blood that are really memorable, and I'm going to label one of them right now. And it's probably one of my favorite levels that I've played in any game in the last couple years. That level is Barroom Blitz. It's a really short little mission at the end of one of the chapters, but it is super entertaining to play, and I've played it dozens of times. So as previously stated, at the end of one of the missions or chapters, campaigns, whatever you want to call it, 
Barroom Blitz is one of the things you have to play through, and it is a very short mission. From the time of leaving the safe house to beginning the main objective of the level, it's only going to take you a minute or two to actually do. And the objective is very simple. They're trying to cart off survivors on buses, and you have to start a jukebox to divert attention to you so that they can load these survivors and other people onto these buses. Starting this jukebox plays licensed tracks, a variety of which are in the game, which I'm going to put on screen now, which is why this section of the video is going to be muted, because I don't want to get copyright claimed for a two minute section in my video here. But once you start up this music and it starts playing, the hordes are going to come for you and they are going to come hard. And it is a ton of fun to play this mission because these songs are just really good selections. With some of my personal favorites being In Hell I'll Be In Good Company by The Dead South, Ace of Spades by Motorhead, Rusty Cage by Johnny Cash, and Black Betty by Spiderbait. There's a bunch of different songs here, and like I said, they are all really good selections and really kind of pump up your adrenaline while you're playing this mission. It just makes it really enjoyable. This mission is just a ton of fun to play. When these music tracks start playing and these zombies are coming to you, it's the same sort of feeling you get when you load up an Easter egg song in Call of Duty Zombies. It just gets you in that zombie killing mood. And for the few minutes that you're playing this mission, I'm just having an absolute blast. And this is one of those memorable moments of Back for Blood that I wish that this game had more of. And admittedly, maybe this game does have more of these. I did not beat the game in its entirety. It went off of Game Pass shortly after I decided to make this video, so I only had a little bit of time to actually gather footage and write this script for this video here. So maybe further on down the campaigns, there are moments like this, but from the little bit I played, this was the number one standout moment of playing Black for Blood, as opposed to Left for Dead, where almost every campaign had something that I was like, in awe of or that was a ton of fun to replay that was this mission here and that's where i think that this game could stand out if they had more moments like this it would really incentivize me to play further along and do that as opposed to go on through four levels of the same old stuff just for a few minutes of absolute bliss and enjoyment and that's really what i think held back for blood back it's just the fact that the game isn't as memorable as it really should be So all in all, picking Back for Blood up again in 2024, I think the game has definitely progressed in a positive direction since the initial launch of the game. Do I think that the devs have done enough to differentiate it between Left 4 Dead that really makes this game stand out? No. There's a lack of memorable locations and a lack of memorable things that do, but there is enough differentiators here that make me go, this isn't Left 4 Dead but it's just close enough to make me wish I was playing Left 4 Dead. Do I think Back 4 Blood is still worth playing? If it was still on Game Pass, honestly, I would recommend it 100%. I did have fun playing it, just not as much fun as I would have if I was playing with a full group of people. I think Back 4 Blood is best enjoyed if you actually have a full squad that's going to run through these campaigns with you. The gameplay in and of itself is good, and it is enjoyable. There just lacks that oomph that this game needs to actually push it over the edge to be something that you could actually come back to and continue to play for years to come. So Back for Blood isn't a horrible disgrace to the gaming industry and something that you should never touch. If it's on a deep discount, I'd say I recommend it or if it comes back to Game Pass. But otherwise, I wouldn't say you should spend full priced money on this game. But that's going to do it for my opinions here on Back for Blood. What do you guys think? Did you play the game at launch? Have you played it recently? Are you still a fan? Let's continue this conversation down below. Thank you guys for sticking around and I'll see you guys in the next one. Cheerio, mates.